Well, with me from Salford is the Shadow Community Secretary, Andrew Gwynn. Thank you very much for coming in to talk to us Good today. Um, so we've got two very different approaches here. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn at the beginning of the week saying he wanted to stay in a customs union. Theresa May on Friday pretty much ruling it out. Isn't Theresa May the one who is being honest with voters here by laying out the hard fact, as she puts it, that we're going to have to accept that we have less access to EU markets? Well, absolutely not. That we are leaving the European Union is, uh, is decided. We had a referendum. But the terms by which we leave the European Union is what the negotiations are all about. And the Labour Party has always said it would seek to maintain the benefits of a customs union. And in doing that, we've set out our proposals for what we think that that new arrangement should be, a bespoke EU-UK agreement that would maintain the benefits of tariff-free trade between the UK and uh, the European Union going forward, but one in which we are equal partners so that we have a say on those new trade deals that are being made uh, on behalf of the new arrangements between our uh, two trading blocks. Well, that's never happened with any other country that's entered into a customs union with the EU. Why on earth do you think that they would give us equal say, one of us against 27 of them, when it came to negotiating a trade deal with somebody else somewhere else in the world? Well, firstly, the EU does have different trading arrangements with other countries. So, it does, example, and none of them have very much of a say in outside trade deals. But, but the difference here, Sarah, is that, as uh, Lord Howard said, we are the sixth largest economy in the world. Uh, the European Union uh, has uh, important trading links with the United Kingdom. It's a two-way process, and therefore it's in both of our interests that we strike a deal that benefits uh, both of us. Now, of course... I don't the, know what's the, happening on well, program you're agreeing with Lord Howard he's agreeing with Nicky Morgan it's a very very unusual although morning that we have here where you're all on the same side although the difference is that the Conservatives have ruled out a customs union and we are saying that a customs union is vital not least so that we can give real assurances that the Good Friday agreement and our treaty obligations in the Good Friday agreement are not torn up we do not want to lose the advantages that we've seen of 20 years of peace between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. So if the EU said you can remain in a customs union but no you don't get a large say in future trade deals with uh, countries outside of the EU and you just had to accept what was negotiated by the EU 27 would you still want to be in that customs union? Well that's something we would have to look at very carefully because we've made it very clear that we want to be a rule maker and not a rule taker and that is and very important. And it's quite important. hard to do that whilst you stay well, in the customs union. Well uh, unless you have a new ar arrangement whereby the United Kingdom Kingdom sits uh, at the table when those trade deals are being made and uh, that is the new arrangement that we seek to make but of course we believe we would be in a better position to make those uh, arrangements with the European Union because we've approached the Brexit negotiations in an entirely different manner we have said what uh, we would like to see in terms of transitional arrangements the government then subsequently followed on a number of those issues but we've all along said that we want to maintain the benefits of tariff-free, custom-free trade, and that is absolutely crucial, not least, as I say, for the Northern Ireland issue. Now, one of the things that the Labour Party was looking forward to after Brexit, and that Jeremy Corbyn has stressed, was the freedom from state aid rules, where the EU stops the UK government from uh, giving financial assistance to any particular sector or industry. Now, Theresa May talked about that on Friday, and she said it would be necessary to sign up to the directives on state aid and procurement rules, to, to keep those EU rules. Do you accept that's going to have to happen? No, we don't accept that. And we have a different view on the government's uh, position on this anyway, because, for example, when it came to uh, our arguments that the government should step in to uh, assist the steel industry in, in Britain, uh, the government used these fallacies about state aid rules to uh, excuse themselves for not giving adequate support to that industry. We didn't uh, believe in the interpretation that the government made because other European countries uh, have got round these so-called state aid rules. But we 
we have said that as part of our negotiations, uh, that is a red line for us, that we would want to ensure that we could uh, facilitate state aid in a number of areas that where Labour Party policies have been very clear about supporting uh, our industries. So if that's a red line, is that more important than staying in a customs union? If you have to make the choice, the EU could say no customs union if you insist on delivering state aid to certain industries. So which one do you pick? Well, we are optimistic that we can get a deal with the European Union for a bespoke arrangement between the United Kingdom and the EU for a new customs relationship, a new customs union. I think uh, there's between a name for outside. that, isn't it? Is that not called cherry picking? Well, it's not called cherry picking because we believe that actually this is in the interests of the UK and in the interests of the European Union. You know, 44% of our trade is with the European Union. 53% of the EU's trade is with the United Kingdom. So it's actually in both of our interests that we sort this out and that we get the best deal, not just for uh, the European Union, but for Britain outside of the European but Union. But you seem to be saying that the Tory government are asking for the impossible in their negotiations with the EU and they won't get what they're looking for. But somehow, if there was a Labour government negotiating this deal, all doors would open and that you would be able to select what bits of a customs union you did and you didn't like and you'd be able to have a bespoke deal that's not available for some reason to Theresa May. My criticism with Theresa May and the Conservative government is that they've ruled out a customs union. Uh, I think that that is a bad decision because I believe that a customs union negotiated between the United Kingdom and the European Union 27 is in the best interest of sorting out customs-free, tariff-free trade going forward, but also sorting out the issue of uh, no border between Ireland, North and South. Now, Labour set out six tests as to whether or not they would vote for the Brexit deal in the end. And one of those tests was that it had to deliver the exact same benefits that we get from being in the single market and the customs union. And that was put in as one of the tests, of course, because it was a quote from David Davis. But... Theresa May has now been very clear, we're not going to get the exact same benefits. It's not possible. Does this mean that Labour, under no circumstances, will be able to vote for any Brexit deal that's negotiated? Well, look, let's see what Brexit deal comes back before we have a hypothetical vote on this. The oh, come on, that, you don't think there's well, any circumstances in which it can deliver the exact same benefits of the single market and the customs union? Well, I believe that if the government wanted to enter into negotiations to do that, they could do that. Uh, the fact that the Prime Minister has conceded is probably because uh, they've already ruled out, for example, a customs union. We believe that that is the wrong decision. We believe that that uh, arrangement is possible. But let's see what the government comes back and, uh, and then of course we will decide how we will vote in Parliament. The fact is that Parliament has got a meaningful okay. vote and that was something that had to be secured uh, through uh, the parliamentary processes. The government weren't going to give us that right and I think it's absolutely right that ultimately it is Parliament that decides. Andrew Gwynne, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Now